Brad Johnson here from Johnson.audio, and today I'm going to talk to you about linear phase EQ and natural phase EQ and how it can affect your mixes and what to listen for between those two. Now, when you pass audio through an equalizer and you do some boosting and some cutting, you are going to introduce some time-based delays, which can mess with the phase coherency of the signal and create what I would say smearing in certain frequencies. Now, some people would say that this is totally negligible. You don't have to worry about it. Don't even think about it. And to a certain point, I agree. However, I just did a three-part mini-series on the new Logic Pro Vintage EQs, and I stacked them against their third-party counterparts. And this was something that actually stood out to me, how certain emulations actually had a little bit more smearing than others. Now, this could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. It just depends on what it is you're trying to achieve in your mix. But the thing you have to think about is mixing is a bunch of subtleties that add up to a big hole. And so if you are putting on an EQ that now all of a sudden has certain smearing aspects to it, and you're putting that across a bunch of other instruments now, you are creating smearing now, not in just one area, but in a bunch of areas. And it'll probably be focused in the same frequency range, which could create a big problem. Now, they have created linear phase EQs to um, minimize this time-based delay effect to create a tighter, more coherent um, image to your source material. It may tax your CPU a little bit more, but it's one option. And there is that option in the Logic Pro 10's uh, Vintage EQ collection where you can switch between natural and linear. And the best way to actually listen to what's happening is I would say flip between those two. It's gonna be very subtle, close your eyes and just put on natural, do some boosting, some cutting and listen to the, the audio file itself and then flip to linear and see how it changes a little bit. The best way to listen for it is think about something up front and center. And then when you introduce the natural phase EQ, you might hear some stuff kind of start splatting out to the sides. It may seem a little bit more fuzzy in its imaging. And when you flip to linear, it'll kind of focus back in. Now, I do believe that the Logic Pro 10 did add in probably some of the most of that smearing out of all the different EQs. So you can flip between the two and definitely get that, that idea of what natural phase and linear phase will do for your audio. But really at the end of the day, it is a very subtle thing. It wouldn't be my um, deciding factor of saying, hey, I have to upgrade to a third party that handles this type of issue better than another. It really is negligible, but just be aware that if you are using the vintage EQs across the board, you are gonna introduce that same kind of thing into all the instruments and that could be a problem for you. So maybe focus on using just one of those EQs on you know a main instrument in your mix and then resort to using just the channel EQ on other stuff. So that's really just the basics of natural and linear phase EQ. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but just know that you are introducing some kind of time-based delays in the frequencies that can create that smearing. Linear phase should help clean that up. Um, that's really the bare bones um, knowledge you need to know about it. I hope you got something out of this. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. If you've gone this far and for some reason you didn't like it, you can give me a thumbs down. I am okay with that. Leave me a comment below if you need me to clarify anything in this video. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. To all my other subscribers, I appreciate your continued support. I am Brad Johnson at Johnson.audio where I just want to help you make better music. I will see you on the next video. Bye.